Folks, hello. Welcome to week four. Uh, we are into chapters eight and nine for this week. Uh, what I thought I would do, let me actually, let me start off by saying uh, uh, chapters eight and nine are probably a little less intensive on the Excel side, uh, but there are a number of manual calculations that uh, we're going to go through this week. So uh, what I thought would be helpful is if I did a, uh, a representation of problems from each uh, chapter eight and chapter nine, so that when you, as you've gone through the reading and looked at the examples and perhaps these examples that I do for you, uh, or at least uh, get you started on, will uh, we'll give you kind of a launching pad to get through uh, the homework for this week. Uh, of course, if there are any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and uh, let me know uh, what it is you need help with and I'll be uh, happy to uh, assist you. So uh, out of chapter eight, uh, I've got uh, problem 45 here. Uh, Nike's annual report show or says that the average American buys 6.5 pairs of sports shoes per year. Suppose a sample of 81 customers is surveyed and the population standard deviation of sports shoes purchased uh, per year is 2.1. Uh, and then there are four questions. Uh, so uh, let's see. So we're going to be asked some questions here uh, about a sampling distribution, right? And that's uh, something that has uh, been discussed uh, over the last couple of weeks. And I think we should be in good shape there. Uh, a couple of things that I have uh, put in bold and one thing that I actually put in bold and I underline. Uh, these are some of the key statistics that we will need to get going on these calculations. So let's look at the, uh, the first question. What is the standard error of the mean in this experiment? Remember, the standard error of the mean is basically the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. And the, uh, the equation that I have over here for you, I'll, I'll show you the actual computation for this problem. But what I wanted to do is remind you uh, what the equation is for the sampling distribution of a mean. And this is in fact a mean, this is not a proportion. Uh, and we know that based on the way that the problem is written. So the standard error of the mean, uh, in this case is the population standard deviation, which you know divided by the square root of the sample size. So if you substitute the values 2.1 for the population standard deviation divided by the square root of 81, so you have a uh, standard error of the mean of about 0.233. Uh, what is the probability that the sample mean is between six and seven pairs of sports shoes? Uh, this is very similar to what you did last week uh, in the uh, normal distribution, for not for a sampling distribution, but just for a set of data by itself. Uh, so how does that change? Well, it really doesn't in the in the regards that since you're given uh, since you're given raw values here, uh, size six and size seven. Both of those values need to be converted to Z values. In this case, the Z value or the Z score, same idea, X minus mu in the numerator or the sampling difference. And then the standard, standard deviation that we would typically see down here in the denominator is actually going to be the standard error of the mean. So effectively X minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of N in order to, to, to get the Z values um, for the uh, for the raw values of six and seven, and then we'll go to the chart. So I have the computations here. Uh, it looks like the uh, the Z value or the Z scores are minus 2.14 and positive 2.14, and it's asking for uh, the sample mean between these two values. So at this point, what we'll do is we will go to the table. Here is the handy dandy Z table from the back of your book. Uh, let me remind myself again. Uh, 2.14. So if we look up 2.1, a Z value of 2.1, we measure that to the tenths place over here in the left-hand column, and we go over to 0 0.04. What do we get? We get an area of 0.4838. So if we just put that in context here, what that would say is if I look at the amount of the distribution between zero and a Z score of 2.14, uh, the amount of area that I would find would be, um, let's see, 48.38% uh, of the distribution. And keep that 48.38 number in mind and remind yourself that because of the symmetry of this curve and the fact that the other Z value is minus 2.14, so the amount between 0 and 2.14 will be the same as the amount between 0 and minus 2.14, 
So in order to find that value or to find that probability, all we will do is we will double uh, 0.4838 and get 0.9676. So the probability that the sample mean uh, from the sampling distribution is between uh, six and seven pairs of shoes annually would be uh, 96 or 0.9676. Uh, then there's a question down here. Uh, what is the probability that the difference between the sample mean and the population mean is less than uh, 0.25 pair? So if you take the mean and you look uh, a half or a quarter, uh, quarter number of pair below and a quarter number of pair above, that would have us finding Z values for 6.25. That's again, 6.5 minus 0.25. So 6.25 on the low end and 6.75 on the high end you can go through and compute those z-scores. And we have symmetry again here. Uh, so that probability is between minus 1.07 and 1.07. So if we go back to our handy dandy z-table and look up uh, 1.07, that gives us an area of 0.3575. So if we take that and double it, the probability of uh, being between six and a quarter and 6.75 on average for the sampling distribution is about 0.7154. And then the final question, what is the likelihood the sample mean is greater than seven pairs? Uh, and so that probability here, what I'm referencing here, why this line is I'm saying, well, you've already computed the z-score here for seven, uh, so we'll use that. So with a z-value of uh, 2.14, again, if we go and look at the table, uh, 2.14, uh, 2.1, 2.14, again, 0.4838. So again, just make sure, let me just go back and make sure we understand what the question is here. In this question, you're asked, what is the probability that the, the number of pair of shoes is greater than seven? So if we look out here, uh, if we start at the mean and we go 2.14 standard deviations, that would be right about here. So the portion of the distribution that answers this question is whatever is left in the tail, right? Because we're looking for something that is greater than um, seven, which has a Z value of 2.14. So you'll notice in the math here, since 50% of the distribution is to the right of the Z, is to the right of zero, if we take 0.5 and we subtract the body value for 2.14, we get a probability of about 0 0.016. So that would be the probability in a sampling distribution of 81 customers that you would have a, uh, a number purchased greater than seven. So I think that will help you uh, on chapter eight. Uh, chapter nine, what I wanna focus on in chapter nine, uh, this is problem number 57, is really uh, just the, um, the constructs. So this, I think this is actually a problem that you should be doing in the problem. So what I wanna make sure, actually, I'm sorry, this is, this is not one of your problems. It's uh, 56 is your problem. This is 57. What I want to focus on here is I want to focus on the construct of this confidence interval. And from the reading, uh, you know that uh, the basic construct, at least for a population uh, mean, is the point estimate, which is the sample mean, plus minus. Uh, in our case, this is going to be a T distribution problem, and I'll explain that in just a second here. So this critical value T of alpha over two uh, times the standard error of the portion, proportion. In this case, it'll be the sample standard, devi standard deviation divided by the square root uh, of the sample size. Uh, so again, let's just go back to the problem. Passenger comfort is influenced by the amount of pressurization in an airline cabin. High pressurization permits a closer to normal environment and a more relaxed flight. A study by airline user groups recorded the equivalent air pressure on 30 randomly chosen flights. The study revealed a mean equivalent air pressure of 8,000 feet with a standard deviation of 300 feet. Develop a 99% confidence interval for the population mean, that's important here, uh, or the mean equivalent air pressure. Uh, so again, the, the first thing, again, make sure that we're clear on the construct uh, again, for a mean, it's a point estimate, plus or minus, mi plus, sorry about that, plus or minus. What actually is the margin of error here? In this case, it's the T critical values times the standard error of the mean. I might have said proportion before. If I did, I apologize. This is the standard error of the mean. The reason 
I make a note over here, this is a T distribution problem. And the reason that we know that is that we are given a standard deviation and it is not strictly stated that it is the population standard deviation. We're gonna assume it's a sample standard deviation. So this is a T distribution problem. And the point I wanna make here is because N is equal to 30, we know that the number of degrees of freedom, uh, which again drives the, uh, the way uh, that the uh, variation in the T distribution is distributed, we have 29 degrees of freedom here. So in the confidence interval, uh, the sample mean is 8,000 feet, and uh, we know the standard deviation. Let me just go and make sure that everybody's clear on this uh, value from the T distribution. The key point to make here is that we are developing a 99% confidence interval. So if we go to the T distribution table, uh, I think you got some exposure to this uh, in the reading. Uh, so first of all, the confidence interval here is a 99% confidence interval. So we are looking, uh, we are looking here uh, in the confidence interval. Let's see, level of significance for one tail, uh, actually for level of significance for two tail would be us right here, meaning there's 1% of the distribution that is actually left in the tail. Half of it is in the left tail, the other half of it is in the right tail. So in our case, since we want a 99% distribution with, uh, I think we said 29 degrees of freedom, the critical value is gonna be 2.756. So if you look at my construct here, 800 is the sample mean, 2.756 is the T value. Again, we explain why you need a T distribution here. And then the standard error of the mean here, because we do not, the do not know the population standard deviation, the sample standard deviation of uh, 300 feet divided by the square root of the sample size, uh, 30 randomly chosen flights. So what you should get when you crunch the math here is a lower bound of 7,849 feet to 8,151 feet. So that, uh, again, focusing here on the construct of the confidence interval, and just making sure that it's clear, uh, if you are not given a population standard deviation, you will be using the T distribution. If you do know the uh, population standard deviation, this would be not T alpha over two, but Z alpha over two, and then uh, dictated by the size of the confidence interval. And then just very quickly, how large is uh, how large of a sample is needed to find a population mean within 25 feet at 95% confidence? This equation is in the book. I'll just throw this one in here for you here. So uh, the sample size is the Z value times the, in this case, the sample standard deviation divided by the margin of error uh, that you're given here uh, in the statement of the problem. So 1.96 times 300 divided by 25, if you square that, that would say that we need a sample size of uh, 554. Uh, let's see, last problem I want to do, this is actually a problem that you do have to do. What I wanted to do was just make sure, the way this one read, I, I actually had to read this one a couple times myself to make sure I was very clear on what it is that uh, we want you to do here. So what I want to do here, this is a bit different from the last one. Remember we said we're talking here about uh, a confidence interval for a mean. And what we're doing over here is we're talking about a confidence interval for, interval for a proportion. And so what I wanna make sure everybody's clear of is the construct is generally the same here, except for the fact that instead of X bar, you're talking about P hat. And in your case, your P hat here is gonna be 0.52 based on the way this problem is stated. Whenever you compute a confidence interval for a proportion, you are always using the Z distribution. You never use the T distribution there. We'll always go Z uh, in this case. And uh, you know your uh, you know your sample size. Uh, so the confidence interval here will be P hat and then the margin of error, Z alpha over two for a 95% confidence interval, you know how to find that Z value. And then here is the standard error of the proportion, P times one minus P over, the, over N, and then you take the square root of that. Just remember for this problem, uh, this first problem, your P is 52. And then uh, to answer this question about estimate the probability that the Democratic candidate is actually leading, uh, let me just give you a hint on this. Uh, and I just make the point, the Democratic candidate would be leading if X, meaning the raw 